All right, guys, what's going on? This is Ryan, a.k.a. Cantor and Clark, and on behalf of my partner, Josh Rager, and I, we just want to thank you guys for tuning into the Block Roots YouTube channel. Today, I think I'm going to be able to give you something that can be quite helpful, whether you are a Bitcoin trader or investor. We're going to talk about sentiment. So there are some methods that right now are quite popular and widely used, but I'm going to give you what I think is a bit more actionable and pertains to market-generated information. And as always, today's video is brought to you by our partner, Femex. Now, this is a place where you can not only trade Bitcoin with leverage on the fastest derivatives exchange, but you can now also buy and sell spot Bitcoin and crypto assets with zero fees. So check this out. They are at Femex.trade. We highly recommend them. Can't stress this enough. A phenomenal exchange and an incredible team. All right, so let's talk about sentiment. And before we get into it, I just want you to remember this phrase by Warren Buffett. You should be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So here's an example of an article that's referencing Bitcoin sentiment. And this is being pulled off of Twitter. And there's a lot of different ways that you can gauge sentiment. And sentiment is really just our belief or opinion as to the given state of the market. So what you'll normally find in markets is that people are either bullish or bearish. There's really no gray area in between. It's very black and white. And there's plenty of different ways that you could gauge sentiment. You can use third-party websites. In crypto, there's a website known as ScalpX Index. They have a fear and greed index. They have a social index. These are third-party platforms that collect and measure data from a variety of sources. Then we could use Twitter. You can data scrape Twitter. You can do polls. Uh, this is a bit more of a manual and crude, blunt process, but it is a way to gauge sentiment. Uh, and then there is what I think the most actionable source of information, and that's market-generated information. That's things like futures, options, spot premium or discount and funding. And these are things that I think are a bit more actionable. So we're going to go through all of these, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea how to gauge sentiment and how to either trade or invest around it. So one of the more popular ways to gauge sentiment is through using something like a social media platform like Twitter. Now off of Twitter, you can gather sentiment manually in a very crude manner of just observing general sentiment, general opinions of the market. Uh, if you're a little bit more tech savvy, you might be able to create a program that does this and data scrapes for you. You can create polls so we can actually, if we have a large enough following, we could actually create polls where we ask what the general opinion is. So we might say something like, is Bitcoin going to move up or down? And we'll try to gather the opinions of who follows us to gauge some level of sentiment, whether the market is positive or it is negative, whether it is bullish or bearish. Now, this is kind of difficult considering crypto Twitter could be a small fraction of the market. So rather it might not be difficult, but it might be inaccurate. There is a possibility though, that the sample is large enough to be extrapolated out to reflect the whole. One difficult thing though, with Twitter is that you're gonna be working against the algorithms, or rather that the algorithms and your brain are gonna be working against you. So people will generally see things that fit their bias. And this is you know just a form of confirmation bias. And if they don't, so if you don't have this problem, Twitter is actually going to be working to continually push content in front of you that you already like. So what you see is going to be curated to a degree. One measure that might be useful is if you do find a sample of people and you create a list, right? So if you find a sample of people that are often correct about the market, you can use this sample to inform your overall positioning or to inform your opinion, right? If you find people that are incorrect about the market consistently, this is also just as good, right? So if you find that there is a consistently incorrect bunch, well, then this is just as good as a consistently correct bunch, right? If you find someone that is always longing the exact top, they might be worth keeping around, right? So this is using Twitter and there, there are definitely a lot of drawbacks to it. And it is sometimes oversimplified that someone might look at their Twitter feed and just say, oh, everyone seems to be longing or everyone seems to be shorting. There obviously needs to be uh, a bit more detail and precision added to that because otherwise, again, that is just a, it's a sledgehammer where you really need a scalpel. So the next method incorporates a little bit of this and it also incorporates a little bit of market generated information. All right, so this next method and tool is a bit of a hybrid. 
And what we're looking at right here is ScalpX. They have a social index, they have market generated information such as open interest, open value, liquidations. They have your large orders, your large passive orders that are currently resting liquidity. And they also provide that social feedback. So they take information and measure data off of a variety of sources, such as Twitter, Telegram, Discord, and a bunch of other social media platforms as well. And what they do is they combine this with market generated information, such as things with relation to volume, volatility, and momentum, and they create their own social index. So their own proprietary system where they have a social index and a fear and greed index. Now we did just go over farming social sentiment using Twitter and the drawbacks of using this method, but it's really important to understand how the benefits of using that method work, okay? The idea with farming social sentiment is that someone's opinion of the market or current market conditions is typically indicative of or correlated to the type of positioning they are already in or plan on being in. Okay, so opinions usually follow positioning. So for example, if sentiment is so poor and the market is not continuously moving lower, we might assume that all those who can sell have already sold. So it's important to understand that because there are benefits to using something like social feedback. So if you have a good enough curated list of people that you're following on Twitter, they can be useful, all right? Especially, this brings it back to the point of, and this is gonna bring us to their indexes, the concept of fear and greed, right? So to be fearful when, those, when many are greedy and to be greedy when many are fearful. So what this platform has is market-generated information. So we can see all the things that we would find on something like TradingView or on any of the trading platforms. We could see this information right here pertaining to the large buys and sells, right? What they do have that is their sentiment tool is their social index and their fear and greed index. Now these on their own are gonna be what I would say pretty noisy, right? So we see there's a lot of periods in which they're up and down and they're really not, um, they're, ne they're not really actionable during these sort of average periods. Where these tools are actionable is at pointing at, or rather during extremes. So we'll see that when the fear and greed index are at extremes, this is typically useful at identifying or signaling that a market reversal might be near. So what you often find at highs, where the market turns and at lows is that there is extreme emotion. So we'll see that at a high, typically at a market peak, People think that it's just going to continuously get better, that it's you know the best time the market has ever experienced. Uh, it's money printer time. It is an extreme state of euphoria and elation. And this is typically sort of the what I would refer to as the, the canary in the coal mine for, for worst times to come. When everyone is really greedy, when it looks like the opportunities are just, the abundance is just never ending. That's when using something like a fear and greed index can be useful for the extreme. So we'll look at the extreme values and create sort of a baseline from those moving forward. So we see now that the most recent top was marked by a fear and greed index, the greed index of this being right now above 90. And that bottoms have been marked where greed was down around under 10. So when everyone is extremely fearful and when it seems like it's only going to get worse, that's one of the signs that the market might be turning because at that point if everyone is extremely negative then you know what is who is left to sell right that's the the famous quote who is left to sell so this is a tool that combines social index rather social information so things off of you know from twitter feedback and telegram feedback and market generated information so it takes into consideration large buys large sells momentum volatility and volume so this is a combination and it's a very useful tool. Uh, I like to just, I primarily like to stick to this last method that we're gonna get into. So let's get to that right now. All right, so these last methods that we're gonna refer to are, at first they might seem a bit more complicated, but hopefully I'll be able to describe them to you in a very easy to digest manner. So we're gonna be talking about futures, either being in contango or backwardation. We're gonna talk about options, specifically skew and 25 delta skew. And then we're gonna talk about funding. So the basis between spot and perpetual swaps. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is futures term structure. And specifically, we're gonna focus on this table right here. So this is showing us the futures versus spot basis. And basis is the difference between spot and futures contracts. 
So Spot can either trade at a premium or a discount to futures contracts. This graph right here, or this table, is showing us all of the available exchanges, or rather, or rather all of the current exchanges that offer linear futures contracts. And we can see whether or not they're trading at a discount or a premium to the spot price. So immediately we can see whether or not the market is in contango or backwardation. So those two concepts are concepts that I often refer to. So let's really quick just go over what each of them mean. So here we have a very basic chart of a forward curve. So futures term structure. And we're looking at the difference between a market in contango and backwardation. So the spot price, that's the current Bitcoin price that is offered on something like Coinbase or Gemini or Bitfinex. The futures term structure, those are the linear futures contracts. So those are the contracts that have further out expirations. So you might have an expiration out one month from now, two months from now, three months from now, you know, six months from now. Now in traditional markets, contango and backwardation, might be an indication of underlying market conditions. So actual technical factors. So in a market that is in contango, this incorporates things like funding, cost of storage, um, cost of carry, interest, opportunity cost. This is reflective of current supply and demand factors. A market that's in backwardation, it might be an indication that there is a supply shock or there is a lot more near-term demand than demand forward out in the curve. So with Bitcoin, this is not really something that we have to consider. We never really have to consider something like supply shock. If anything, the curve of futures term structure with Bitcoin is just an indication of how investors feel about futures prices. So if we see that the market is in backwardation and we see that the futures term structure is sloping down over time, meaning that the furthest out expirations are well below the current spot price, it's an indication that participants are very bearish. And this has actually been a pretty useful metric to pay attention to for longer term bottoms. So in the last very small sample that we've had, the bottoms have been marked by futures term structure being in gross backwardation. Contango is reflective of a normal healthy market. So markets will typically normally be in contango when expectations are that asset prices will rise over time. So with Bitcoin, when the market is an extreme contango, that is something that might serve as a reason to be careful, a reason to rather be cautious, because when people have such high expectations of future prices, that is just one of those things that is a hallmark of over-optimism or elation and euphoria. So things that come along with times that seem like they can only get better, right? Those periods where everyone is in excess, very greedy. So futures term structure with Bitcoin is something that we can refer to. We could look at the term structure and see if it is in this case very steep to the upside or to the downside and potentially begin to use that as some form of sentiment gauge. So we could see whether or not the market is very bearish or very bullish. All right, so this next thing we're gonna focus on, and just as a heads up, we're gonna keep it very simple. We're not gonna go down the options rabbit hole whatsoever, is either 30, 20 delta skew, or if we go on to skew.com, 25 delta skew. You could calculate this value on your own. So this either positive or negative value by just going on to Deribit's options ladder and either identifying both the 30, 20 Delta puts and the 30, 20 Delta calls or just the 25 Delta put and the 25 Delta call. Essentially what we're looking at by identifying whether or not puts are trading more expensively or calls are trading more expensively is whether or not the market is optimistic or pessimistic. So options can be used as both a hedge and for directional purposes. And in the case of a hedge, they're essentially downside protection or insurance. So if we see that 25 delta skew or 30, 20 delta skew is negative, what that indicates is that puts are trading more expensively than calls because the 25 delta skew or 30, 20 delta skew is calculated by minusing the put implied volatility from the call implied volatility from those same deltas. So what it means is the market is placing fear in that case to the downside. They're buying downside protection. Now, this is not a guarantee of anything, but what it is, is an indication of what the overall market sentiment is. So again, just like other tools, the extremes are where it counts, right? So when the market is very fearful, we'll see that the 25 delta skew will be a very negative number. When the market is very optimistic and overly optimistic, we'll see that the 25 delta skew will be an overly positive number. So 
it is just something that can complement your current strategy. It's not something that you know you see and say, okay, 25 delta skew is negative. That means that the market is going to move up, right? Because I need to take the counter trend trade to that. This is just one other thing to pay attention to. All right, so the last thing we're going to be talking about is the funding rate. Now, I've gone over the funding rate before and how you could use it as a positioning tool to identify whether the market might be crowded long or crowded short. And for the same reason, it's also a good sentiment tool. So like other sentiment tools, it's best to use it at identifying extremes or to consider it when identifying extremes or extreme values within it. So the funding rate, as I've said, you know, perpetual contracts don't expire. They do need to settle against the spot price of the asset though. Now, when one side of the market is more aggressive than the other, there will be a disparity between these two prices. And in order to keep the two prices in line, meaning the spot price and the contract price, there is an interest rate component that's added between buyers and sellers. So it's not that you're paying the exchange, but you're paying the other side of the market. So when funding is positive, longs pay shorts. When funding is negative, shorts pay longs. So it's an incentive mechanism. It incentivizes traders to take positions and actions that close any short-term gaps, and it penalizes traders who keep their positions open and who do not. So right here, we're looking at the funding rate across multiple exchanges. This is on SKU.com. If you wanna find the funding rate on your exchange, just look at the contract details box and it'll list the current funding rate. Again, I said the, the funding rate is best used to gauge sentiment at extremes. So when the funding rate is very positive, meaning over 10 basis points or a 10th of a percentage, that's a very high positive funding rate. That means that the market has been aggressively long for a while. And more often than not, you'll see that traders will become trapped at those levels. And it has been one of the signs of a turning point when the market is moving up and the funding rate gets very positive. It's expensive to keep those positions open, right? And the market has been very confident if it's been moving up that aggressively, you'll typically see that this is the time when people get caught off sides, right? The same can be said, and the same kind of flip side opportunities can exist when the funding rate is very negative, right? For the other side of the market, when the funding rate is very negative, when it is below 10 basis points, so negative, in this case, 0.1%, that's an indication that the market has been aggressively short. It's been aggressively hitting the bid and aggressively selling. And it's an extreme value. So it's not like it is just minorly negative, in which case it can continue on being that way. But at these extreme values, we normally see that sentiment is so poor, and this is an opportunity to buy that blood and to take advantage of that fear. So the funding rate is just one of those other tools that is not only a positioning tool, it could show us what side of the market the, the market has been aggressively hitting on the derivatives platform, but when it's at extreme values, it could be an indication of what the market sentiment is. So during bull markets, you'll see that bull markets are just for example, marked by long periods of positive funding. The top, the major turning points usually occur when there are spikes in that funding. So when funding aggressively spikes. So funding is anywhere between one to three basis points, and then we get a spike of over five to 10 basis points. That's typically what you'll find at the turning points. And the corrections during bull markets will be marked by negative funding. So minorly negative funding in a bull market, getting in position around those times is actually a pretty good timing mechanism to identify and take advantage of the turn. So the funding rate is just another tool we can add. So we have the funding rate, we have futures term structure, we have option skew, we have a third party piece of software such as ScalpX. All of these tools with Twitter can help you identify what market sentiment is. I would be careful in trying to combine too many of these things at once, right? It's beneficial for you to get good at using one, right? And to more or less lean on one than trying to accompany all of these at the same time. But remember, sentiment is, if you're looking at the sentiment of someone in, who is an individual or a group, it can be an indication of their positioning, right? And if that sentiment is marked by inactivity, meaning if the market is overly positive, but the market is not actually continually moving up, or if the market is overly negative, but the market is not continually or aggressively moving down, it could be the indication of the turning point, right? When everyone is really positive and really greedy, that's when it's time to be fearful. And when everyone is really greedy and really, excuse me, when everyone is really positive and really greedy, that's when it's time to be fearful. And when everyone is really fearful, that's when it's time to be greedy.
right? When everyone is really fearful and negative. So that's that, guys. Hopefully this has been informative. As always, it's been a pleasure. This is Ryan with Block Roots, exercise proper risk management and trade effectively.